Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. I see. <laughs> I see Terrace Petra there, and I see Adam Food there, making himself or herself very, very comfortable there. So, oh, I love that ducky. The best minion ever. Oh, thank you for being here, you guys. Seriously. Seriously. How has everyone been? I took a whole week off because I really wanted to rest for a bit. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Terraris, Narum. I really appreciate it. <sighs> How's everyone been so far? past week have you guys been busy doing all the msq stuff i haven't done any of the msq stuff i think i'm going to stream later uh to do the msq and the uh, beast tribe story later maybe later or maybe tomorrow maybe probably tomorrow i don't think i could do it today i kind of want to do some resting further resting i don't know like, you know the feeling when you rest a lot and then you still feel like you need rest? That's what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> I rested the whole week and then still feel like, I want to rest more. But it's okay. Yeah. So I'll probably do the story stuff tomorrow. Probably. Like, in the evening. I'll probably stream in the evening. Oh, I don't know. I could be doing... Clear. No, actually, you know what? I'll do the story, the MSQ and the Beast Trap stuff tomorrow. I'll try to stream it if I really want to. Uh, and then on Wednesday, I'll go and schedule, do the re-clears on Wednesday. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Or evening, or good afternoon wherever you guys are right now thank you for being here with me this morning we are reading if you are new to my channel and don't know what the hell this is about um i do a reading session called nudibles which is a play on word on audible uh whereby i uh select a book that i would like to read <laughs> Because I'm selfish like that. <laughs> and um, we'll read the book together. I bought a lot of new books recently and would love to read them with you. But I think in between the new books, I read some that I have read before. So I'm, now I'm trying to, to decide which is the next book that I'm going to read. Uh, I know that I love Natsume Sosaki, but I know that most people find him very nihilist and cynical. Too cynical, perhaps. So, could be. At this time, maybe we need something a bit more uplifting. I don't know. Like, we'll see how it goes, alright? But yeah, so... Nudibles is just where I read books to people who are interested in listening to me read. Um... It could also be a place whereby, um, I don't know, we can learn English together. Why not? <laughs> I'm still learning English. There are some words that I still cannot pronounce. And sometimes in the midst of reading a sentence, I would stop and try to Google the word and try to find out how it's being pronounced. So, yeah. <laughs> or even what it means. So, in a, in a way... You listen to me read, and then we learn English together. 
if English is not your first language, that is, because English is uh, not my first language. When I think about it, I think English is my th- second or third language. I think, yeah, it's probably my third language, but uh, it's also my most fluent right now <laughs> because I use it most of my adulthood. Yeah. So if you are interested, what I have done the past week. I didn't do much. I just sleep and rested. I meet up with friend. I went out shopping alone. I went to eat something really nice on my own. I went to get a new tattoo done. Uh, Good morning, Ando. Good morning, Sam. Thank you for being here. Oh my god. Yeah, I had a pretty good rest, I think. Um, yeah. But I miss hanging out with you, Sam. And Strudel, too. Yeah. I miss our chaotic borderlines, borderlands streams. <laughs> but it's okay. Everyone needs a rest. Strudel definitely needs his rest right now. That's fine. I'll be waiting patiently for him. Yeah. I got a new tattoo. I don't know if I want to show you guys. It's pretty cool. It's a it's a kind of like a tarot card inspired. Good morning, Exia. But um, it's a custom design, so I'm the only one who will have that tattoo. Nobody else. What's the new tat? Um, the instruction that I gave to the artist was two snakes. Um, in a celestial tarot card setting. That's all. And the artwork that she gave me is utterly amazing. Like, it's crazy. I'll show you guys. I'll show you, Sam. But yeah. Uh, It's not done yet. That's the thing. Because uh, I do it hand poke. So it takes so much longer than normal machine tattoo. Because I personally will not ever go back to machine tattoo anymore after trying out hand poke because hand poke tattoo is so much more bearable (laughs) it's so much more bearable to be honest Uh, it still hurts because of the the amount of details on this current tattoo that i it's in work in progress but at the same time it's so much more bearable than the machine tattoo and machine tattoo is just the sound itself scares the hell out of me and um yeah it represents uh, two things. Um, one is that I am uh, I'm born in the month of June, um, so I'm a gem gem. I'm a Gemini, so two snakes, um, and then my Chinese zodiac is a snake, and. Uh, it also represents a lot of other things uh, that's currently going through in my life right now. That these two snakes are so different from each other, but they are also the same snake or the same. They have to work together, basically. So it means a lot to me. This tattoo is like one of the most meaningful tattoo that I could ever ha like I could ever have, basically. <laughs> for that for whatever that I am going through or f- for this year for my life I guess. This is a very, very meaningful tattoo. I'll show it to you, Sam. Yeah. But I try not to be too 
um, <laughs> openly. Like, I will show you guys pictures of me getting tats, but I won't show you the tats. Like, straight up. <laughs> it's a bit unless I do like a in real life stream where I'm doing pottery. Oh yeah, I bought a pottery wheel, guys. Uh, I bought a pottery wheel so I can actually stream my pottery pa practice at home comfortably. Hell yeah! Are you guys interested in that? Me doing pottery, just practicing really. I have a pottery classes Friday. Uh, for painting, glazing. Oh, it's 11 past 11. It's time to read. Guys, once again, <laughs> thank you, Arun, for the dance. Thank you for being here. And I shall start my reading now. Okay, guys, grab your book. <coughs> Today. <sighs> okay, let me take a sip of my tea and then we shall start, all right? Sorry, I got distracted. Alrighty, today we are continuing, as the title says, Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tsujimura in the second overall chapter. Second semester. In the second semester, things fall into place. For the month of October. And we shall start right now. It happened sometime at the beginning of the month. Kokoro was preparing as, you, as always to leave the castle just before it closed at 5 o'clock when Aki asked, Are you planning to come over tomorrow? It was unusual for Aki to ask, Sure. But what's up? Kokoro replied. Aki said meaningfully, I have something to say. Something I want to tell everyone. If I do it, when one of us is missing, it won't be fair. Her manner left Kokoro uneasy. Is it about me? She wondered. Did I do something? Worrying only make her feel ill, but Aki said, Okay then, see you tomorrow and slip through the mirror for home. The next afternoon, with Leon, the last arrived, all seven of them were together. It transpired that Aki had already warned them all she had something to tell them. Kokoro was surprised to see it wasn't only Aki who had something to say, but Masamune as well. Kokoro wondered about this unlikely pairing. Masamune was the first to speak. Hey, so, I wanted to know. How seriously are you people looking for the wishing key? The group looked startled. Since only one person's wish would come true, they all saw each other as far as this was concerned as rivals. Which might explain why they hardly ever talk about it. The Wolf Queen had made it clear that if someone located the key, found the wishing room, and had their wish granted, then the castle would close down permanently even before the 30th of March deadline. As the castle was still open, it meant no one had yet found had no one had yet had their wish granted. But Kokoro could sense that everyone was still conscious as 
the key was yet to be found. I have looked for it, but not recently. I haven't had time. Plus, it's fun here. This was from Ureshino, whose bandages were off now. The, ga the gaze on her cheek has been replaced by a plaster, and he seemed to be in much less pain. Masamune glanced over at him, and he continued. Same for me, but we all search for a bit, am I right? No matter what, what on your own wish might be. I suppose... Subaru said. When the subject had come up before, he had said he didn't have any particular wish and would help Masamune look, but it seemed even he had done some looking on his own. After the wolf queen explained it all, of course I wondered about it. Like, who knows, maybe it will just turn up, but it hasn't. Aki nodded. Masamune and I have a proposal. We think it Entire, it's entirely possible that someone has already found the key and perhaps has a plan to hide it until the last possible moment in March or else is struggling to locate the wishing room so we thought we'd ask you all. A proposal? Masamune and Aki exchanged a look. The other day, the two of us just happened to be alone in the castle and started talking about it. I'll fess up. Masamune and I search very hard for the key. We look everywhere. We were told it would be in some public area, not in any individual rooms. And though it's a big space, there are only so many places to look. And believe me, I scoured the place. So did I, Aki said. She sighed and looked around. But we couldn't find it. Honestly. I can't think of a single spot I didn't look. I was getting pretty exasperated and Masamune, who was desperately looking too, happened to bump into me in the dining room. What are you talking about? Desperately? Masamune interrupted, sounding a bit frustrated. How can you say that about me, who pretends not to give a toss about it when we are all here and yet who, more desperately than me, I can tell you is out there licking every single plate one by one in search of it. How about you? Don't you sit there all the time pretending to spend every minute in the game room, but as soon as no one's around, you leap into action. I think you're the desperate one. Masamune and Aki glared at each other until Subaru intervened. Hey, you guys, come on. So what are you proposing? That we all work together, Aki said. It's already October, Masamune added. It's been a while since we first summoned here last May, and we still haven't found it. I think the wishing room too must have some kind of hidden entrance to it, and we only got half a year left, remember? It might turn out that the final day will arrive and no one wish will has come true, Aki said. And I'm thinking, we shouldn't see each other as rivals, but search for it together, and then discuss whose wish gets to be granted, or else cast lots or decide by paid rock, paper, scissors. She paused for a reaction. Because we just couldn't find it, Aki lamented. We really busted cut. It'll be a total waste if we finish here without finding it. We just need to get it done, and not worry about how desperate we might look. Makes sense. Fuka, who had been si silent till now, nodded. I had no idea, Aki, she said, that you had a wish that you wanted so badly to come true. It's hard to believe Masamune was so keen too. Aki seemed upset. Perhaps taken aback to be confronted so directly by Fuka, she looked away. If you are told it will definitely come true, Masamune said, then everyone will have a wish or two. But Fuka's next word startled them, them all even more. Have a wish or two? I don't. Kokoro couldn't tell if she was being serious. Then Fuka said, it's okay. I'll help out. I'm on board with the idea of us all looking together for the key. By the way, I have not found it. Not that I search much, anyway. 
It was true that Fuka was over in the castle. She spent more time shut up in her room than anyone else. She really might not be that interested in looking for the key. Kokoro had no idea what to say. Of course, she too had a wish she wanted to come true, but it was kind of a questionable wish she was unsure she wanted to reveal, especially to the boys who would probably start to avoid her if she told them. Okay, so if they did locate the key, how would they decide whose wish to make come true? Deciding by rock, paper, scissors would work, but if one by one they were to explain their wish in front of everyone, like an election speech, trying to convince the others of the intensity of their desire, then Kokoro, was, who wasn't much of a speaker, would be at a disadvantage. Aki or Masamune would certainly run away with it, but the keys was yet to be found, and there was no guarantee it would ever be. Kokoro herself, when she was in mo the mood, had secretly looked around but had come up empty-handed. Like Aki said, it would be a real shame if it all ended with no one's wish coming true. I'm okay with looking with you all, Rion said. Ureshino nodded his essence. Me too, sure. Ever since Ureshino had left the castle to go back to go back to the school and had returned beaten up, the atmosphere in the castle had definitely changed. Everyone was more comfortable about opening up to the rest. We too still haven't replied, she thought. Her eyes and Subaru met. Kokoro was the first to nod. If her wish come true, that would make her the happiest, certainly. But enjoying her time in the castle until March was equally important. It was only now when she heard that they had just six months left that reality sank in she had been so oblivious what happened if the castle disappeared she was still not able to go to school she has been think thinking the next school year was way off but in an but it was inexorably coming nearer when she thought of herself as a sophomore in junior school, she felt the blood drain from her and her stomach started to ache. For Kokoro too, there was no other option. They had to find the key. I agree. Let's look for it together. Kokoro nodded and Subaru beside her broke into a smile. Okay, he said. We're not going to start searching for it properly. So let's do things systematically. What if we draw a map of the castle and cross off the areas we have already covered? I think I did a complete search in the dining room, Aki said, quickly raising her hand. I look everywhere, from the empty fridge to right at the back of the curtains. Of course, I would like all of you to check too. I've looked five or six times in here, Masamune said, casting his eyes around the game room. He pointed at the mounted stackhead and the fireplace. Subaru nodded too. I checked in the kitchen and the bathrooms. I wondered about them since there's no running water, so I checked over the taps and the drains but found nothing. I couldn't find the entrance to the, to the wishing room either. Really? Masamune gave Subaru a knowing smile. Got a problem with that? Subaru shot back. Nah. I just hadn't thought you would look so keenly, but now I see you are actually really into it. You're bad, you know. And you aren't? This back and forth made Kokoro a little anxious, but the two boys were smiling. They seemed pleased they could finally banter like this, freely open up to each other. I have one request. It was Rion's turn to raise a hand. He waited until everyone he had everyone's attention. The Wolf Queen said that the castle was open until March, but she also said that if we find the key and wish and a wish comes true, then it will close down instantly. She did, Aki agreed. Then, Rion said, I'll join in, but since we are all doing it together, could you promise one thing? Even if we find the key, we don't use it until March? 
and keep the castle for us to spend time in until the very end. Kokoro caught her breath and looked at him. She had been wanting the exact same thing. Next April was a new school year, and even if she was able to move classes at junior high, the thought of going back made her so depressed she wanted to hide. She has been absent from school a long while now, and not even the prospect of a new class was enough to persuade her to go back, and Sanada would still be in the same school year. She didn't think she could make it till March, hold up alone in her bedroom. She was too afraid and frightened. She wanted the castle to stay just the way it was. She and Rion were in the same wavelength. Rion said, No matter whose wish comes true, could we all stick to our agreement? No one goes off on their own? Of course, Masamune said. She looked at the others trying to read them. We all wanted to stay here as long as we can. No one opposed to that. Not Subaru with his bleach hair and civilized manner of speech. Not Aki with her older boyfriend. Not Fuka who had no wish. Not Ureshino who had come back beaten up and didn't believe he had been bullied. They were silent. Good, Hideon said. He smiled brightly. I am relieved to hear it. So, we are you're, join, you're, you're joining forces? How completely wonderful that you have worked out a strategy. It was then that they heard the voice. It was right behind Kokoro who let out a scream. She jumped away and looked around. It was indeed the Wolf Queen making her first appearance in quite some time. Wolf Queen! They have been caught off guard. They stared wide-eyed. She was wearing this dress that they have never seen before, but the mask was as bewildering as ever. Well, well, well. Nice to see you all, my little red riding hoods, she said, strutting into the center of the room. What are you doing scaring us like that? Masamune and Rion said. My apologies, the wolf queen said fluttering her hand her expression as always unseen behind the mask you red riding hoods seem to be having such a good time so i just popped away for a bit but i realized i hadn't told you one important thing important thing aki asked head tilted isn't it against the rules is it for us all to work together to look for the key no problem at all, the wolf queen said. In fact, that's excellent. It's splendid to see you cooperating so efficiently and helping each other. It's beautiful, so give it your all. Good. But there is one thing I forgot to say. I came here to tell you today. She perched awkwardly on the table in front of the sofa. Having a wish Fulfilled is all very well, of course, of course. Just understand, though, that the moment you use the key and enter the wishing room to realize your wish, you will lose all memory of this castle. What? It was a collective response. The Wolf Queen chose to ignore it. The instant your wish is granted you will forget everything the castle and all that has unfolded within its walls you forget each other and of course you forget me a bit sad no she added looking intently into your eyes if no one's wish is granted before the 30th of march then your memory will remain intact castle will close down but you'll remember all that happened that's how it works the wolf queen gave a little shrug and slid off the table kokoro couldn't imagine what sort of expression she wore underneath the mask i am so sorry i forgot to tell you the wolf queen said airily 
the group were dumbfounded. Kokoro too needed time to digest things. They would forget that all has unfolded within its walls. The words were a shock. Are you joking? A voice finally piped up. Rion sounded puzzled. It's not as if I don't believe you, but are you serious? Kokoro could fully understand Rion's confusion. How he could understand her meaning, but his emotions rejected it, and he wanted to make sure. Kokoro and probably the rest felt the same. I am utterly serious, the Wolf Queen said serenely. Do you have any other questions? So what happens to our memory of our time here? It was Masamune who asked this. There was a hint of aggression in his tone. Several months are passing, so what will we have been doing all that time? Your memories will be filled in as needed, said the Wolf Queen. They will be filled with a repeat of things you were doing before. Sleeping, watching television, reading manga and books, going out shopping occasionally, playing in video arcades, memories of those sort of things I imagine. So you're saying that memories of reading any books or playing video games will be replaced with something else? So something new I've read here, a manga story for instance, won't stay with me at all? What a waste of time! Maybe. But is that such a problem? The Wolf Queen's tone was brusque. Is it at all important to you to store up new manga stories? Of course it is! Don't be stupid! Masamune pouted, his irritation finally showing. For her part, Kokoro was reflecting how in her bedroom with its light orange curtain, she enjoyed watching day after day the reruns of her favorite TV soap, and how by the end of the day, the storyline would have half faded in her memory anyway. It wasn't just dramas. Talk shows and variety shows too, the content was quickly forgotten. But for Masamune, who was moved to tears by video games just as he was by manga and movies, not being able to build up new knowledge from their content might truly be a colossal loss. The Wolf Queen just shook her head, then give them up. They might be important to you, but that's how much energy needs to be expended to make a wish come true. If you don't like it then, if you find the key, don't use it. The Wolf Queen had a stern look in her eye as she stared into each of their faces. But what you little red riding hoods have done on the other side of the mirror will remain. Playing football, finding a boyfriend, dyeing your hair, going back to school and getting beaten up. Kokoro could sense Sureshino tense up. You mean me? He asked in a tight voice. Are you making fun of me, Wolf Queen? Ever since the incident, Urashino had become calmer, never once raising his voice or even falling in love with any of them and Kokoro was at pains to avoid the subject coming up again. Unexpectedly, the Wolf Queen replied, No, I am not. I find it... I find your courage in coming back commendable. I just mention it as an example, and if it has bothered you, I am sorry. My apologies. Her uncompromising reply left Urashino deflated. Eh? He said. He turned to Fuka next to him and asked, Commendable? What does that mean? It means she respects you. Urashino's eyes opened wide in astonishment. Any more questions? The Wolf Queen asked. What Kokoro wanted to say wasn't a question but more of an opinion. Or to put a final point on it, something that dissatisfied her. Their memories would vanish. They would forget the castle, 
and naturally that meant they would forget each other as well. Kokoro had no idea how the Wolf Queen interpreted their silence. If there is nothing else, I'll be going, she said, and with that, she was gone. They hadn't seen her disappear like that in a while, but no one dared to comment. When she first performed her vanishing act, it had caused quite a stir, but now the atmosphere has changed. Kokoro missed those earlier days. So, our memories vanished. So what? A voice said, breaking the silence. It was Aki. The group gave her a look. Kokoro wasn't sure if she was doing it intentionally or not, but she met their eyes with a cool response. That doesn't bother me one bit, she said. I mean, we can only be here in the castle until March anyway, and after that, we won't be able to see each other anymore. The key will grant any wish, and not to use it would be a huge waste, right? Aki looked at each other. Aki looked at each of them in turn, as if seeking agreement. All of this didn't exist before, so it would just mean going back to our earlier lives. What's wrong with that? Everything. They all turned in surprise at the voice. It was Ureshino. He tended to get emotional, but his voice seemed unusually quiet. Aki, uncharacteristically, didn't respond. And Ureshino continued. I hate the thought of it. I don't want to forget how you all have heard me out, or how the Wolf Queen said she respected me. She didn't say she respected you. She said that she found your action commendable, Masamune said. So? Urashino looked serious. If it means forgetting you all, then I don't need to have my wish granted. His eyes looked straight ahead and shone for once without a hint of spite. He turned to Aki, tilting his head. Don't you feel like that too, Aki-chan? Would you really prefer your wish to come true? Kokoro listened in surprise. Ureshino had admitted to hunting for the key, but now declared he would rather keep his memories than have his wish granted. She was a part of these memories, so were Masamune and Aki, with all their bickering and arguing, every one of them. Kokoro felt something warm seeping out of her from within inside, and she realized it was a feeling of happiness. Aki might have been experiencing the same sort of elation, despite her tough words, she seemed thrown off a stride. No, it's not like I... She said, Maybe Aki was just putting up a brave front. Could she really say that as long as she had her wish, she didn't care? Urashino piped up. In fact, I might really go for it. And get hold of the key first, and then I'll break it or hide it. I might actually try to block you, Aki-chan. Aki turned a bright red and glad. Sorry. Urashina looked down and no one spoke. A silence descended on them, and even more stifling than if someone had angrily shouted. Finally, Aki spoke up. Fine. Do whatever you want. And with that, she, de- she departed the room. The group were left to look at each, other, at each other blankly. The unspoken message. It was time to go. I wonder what Aki's wishes. This from Subaru, who had not spoken up until now. It didn't sound like he was seeking anyone's opinion, but merely voicing his own thoughts. Well, I suppose it's each to its own. He murmured and smiled. But still, the Wolf Queen's so mischievous. I mean, why tell us that now, at this stage? Or perhaps she was waiting for this to happen. Waiting? Kokoro asked. He's always got such an unusual take on things, she thought. Yeah, Subaru replied. Maybe she was just waiting for us to get to know each other first, waiting until the moment when we don't care about our wish anymore. Maybe she never intended to grant anyone's wish anyway. Perhaps 
There isn't even a key at all. I can't see that, Masamune muttered. True, no? Subaru said. Nah, Rion shook his head. I think the Wolf Queen does mean to grant one of us a wish. I don't think she's doing all this out of spite. She could be testing us though, to see if we'll go for the wish in full knowledge of the consequences. No matter what we decide, I think she'll go along with it. I have the feeling she wasn't lying when she said that she's simply forgotten to tell us earlier. Kokoro got the faint sense that the Wolf Queen was still listening in on their conversation. What do you think, Fuka? Me? Fuka turned around to face them. She had an odd expression. I've been thinking that even when we return to the real world, I will still keep in touch with you all. Eh? Till now, I've always thought if we tell each other who we are and where we live, we could carry on seeing each other. So I didn't find it all that upsetting. Oh. Kokoro understood what Fuka meant, since she's sort of been thinking the same way. She couldn't imagine never seeing them again. Fuka's real world took on an even heavier weight. This was real. And being here in the castle, she thought, but their reality lay outside, the kind of place she didn't want to go back if she could avoid it. But if we forget everything, isn't that impossible? We might exchange addresses, but won't we forget that we, we have even done it? But if a wish isn't got granted, then it might be a good idea to exchange our contact info just in case, said Masamune. Addresses and phone numbers? Subaru asked and Masamune nodded. At the beginning, the two of them had played video games together all the time and they seemed quite familiar, in part. But after the summer break, when Subaru had bleached his hair, they began to seem a bit mismatched. Kokoro couldn't picture them, Masamune and the flashy yet so polite Subaru together, say, in a classroom. Our contact info. The words pierced her. The real world. Our outside contact info. It hit home for Kokoros that so many things here in the castle were the exception. They really knew nothing about each other. Rion apparently was living in Hawaii. She never knew that much but she had always felt she couldn't ask the others where they were from and so she had not. Certainly she was dying to know, but she resisted the notion of anyone knowing anything about her. One moment please for a sip of tea. I wonder why, she thought. Because I want to forget it all myself. While she was here, she wanted to, to be free from it all. From being a student at Yukishina No. 5 Junior High, from that class with Miyori Sanada in it, from Tojo-san who lived two houses down the road. The others may felt the same way. They might have, at some point, start to show some interest in Fuka's idea of exchanging personal information, but none of them seem ready to take that step today. So, our memories vanished. So what? Aki's parting words. As since then, she had not been back to the castle. Maybe she was being stubborn. It was possible she didn't really feel that way, but said it to make herself look tougher. 
Those who still came to the castle had been conscious of Aki's absence. Masamune said jokingly, Doesn't she wonder what will happen if someone finds the key when she's not here? But they had until March, so they didn't feel in any rush. It was, after all, still only October. Hunting for the key, making a wish and losing their memories, it was all still too soon for that. It was early November before Aki came back to the castle. Kokoro was the first to find out she had reappeared. Aki was in the game room on the sofa, crouched in the corner, hugging her knees. Aki-chan, she said it hesitantly. Aki looked up from where her head had been buried between her knees. She seemed about to weep. The room was brightly lit, but somehow the area around Aki lay in shadow as if she had sucked all the light away. Thank you. Thank you, Tazamina. Oh, thank you for being here. <sighs> Aw, so many of you. Oh my god. I didn't realize. Sorry. Good morning, Anna Hyun. This is the first time I see you. Good morning, Shina Matrix. Thank you for being here with me. And Taza, always at the right spot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Her face was pale, imprinted by the crease from her skirt. Kokoro, Aki said. Her voice was thin, it caught in her throat, hoarse and dry, sounding almost as if she was has asking for help. Kokoro gave an audible gasp. Aki was wearing school uniform. Kokoro realized no one had ever come to the castle dressed in uniform. She had a bluish green sailor type's collar and a dark red scarf. As she looked up, Kokoro saw the school badge on the right breast pocket of her blouse. The name of the school was embroidered beside it. Yukishina number five. She stared at Aki's uniform. She recognized it. There was no mistaking it. Aki-chan! Her voice was stiff. Aki-chan! Do you go to Yukishina number five junior high? Aki followed Kokoro's eyes and looked down at her uniform. Yeah? She nodded, her movements sluggish as if only now realizing what she was wearing. Yes, she said again, and looked at Kokoro doubtfully. Yukishina number five. November. 
心 was thunderstruck. What's wrong? Aki asked, standing up. Her eyes still look cloudy, though in Kokoro's company a clear spark of life had returned. The red crease from the skirt still showed on her cheek. Kokoro thought she may have been crying, perhaps because of the tears. A few stray strands of hair were stuck to her cheek. Oh! They heard voices and turned to find Subaru and Masamune standing in the doorway they could have come through. The mirrors look about. They have come through the mirrors around the same time. They stood fixed to the spot, eyes wide, and looked incredulously at Aki. Kokoro had no idea what to say. She saw the two boys gaze light quickly from Aki's face to the school badge on her chest. What? Masamune said. Why the uniform? I mean, it's, is that your actual uniform? What do you mean? Her eyes narrowed as she realized something was up. Because it's exactly the same. Aki frowned. It's exactly the same uniform worn by the girls at my school. Subaru, restless beside him, began to wrinkle his brow. At yours too? Subaru asked. Aki looked at Kokoro astonished. What? What are you? And then, at the faces of the boys, pale with shock, Yukishina, number five junior high. As if piecing together the syllable one by one. You're joking, of course, it's not just the uniforms familiar, she added. You're actually telling me you both go to Yukishina number five junior high in Minami, no in Minami Tokyo? And me! Kokoro managed to say. Now it was Subaru. Masamune and Aki's turn to stare at her in utter astonishment. What could this all mean? Why was the Wolf Queen doing this? Kokoro couldn't fathom it. We are all kids going to the same junior high. Or, more precisely, who should be going? They had always avoided the subject of school. She had never imagined they were even leaving so close. Oh! Fuka, the next to come into the game room, let out a little yelp. She had also caught sight of Aki's uniform. By now, they were no longer surprised. They wanted for a late afternoon. They, they waited. For a late for late afternoon when Rion would appear. Fuka and Ureshino had displayed the same reaction. What the When Rion arrived, they understood he would be the exception. But that riddle too would was soon solved. When they told him that they should all be attending the same junior high, Rion looked taken aback. That's he began that's in Minami Tokyo City. Yep, they said in near unison. He took a deep breath. I was due to go there too. They stared, speechless. The plan was for me to go there if I hadn't gone abroad. So, is this what it means? Aki asked, unfolded, that we are all kids who are supposed to go to Yukishina but actually aren't going? Is that... The common factor that brought us together? I guess so, but... Fuka wrinkled her nose in puzzlement. Aren't we quite a big group? She asked, to no one in particular. Are there this many kids who have dropped out from the same school? I always thought it was just me. And I thought it was just me, thought Kokoro. Kokoro, Rion, and Ureshino were in the first year of junior high. Fuka and Masamune were in their second year. Kokoro had not been aware Rion and Ureshino were from the same school as her, let alone the same grade. Rion's situation was different, but the incident with Ureshino must have taken place in a classroom very near her own.
Kokoro remembered overhearing her mother talking to the head of the alternative school. Elementary school is such a pleasant place. Comfortable place for most children, so it's not at all unusual for so many to have trouble fitting in when they make the transition to junior high, especially with a junior high like Yukishina Number no. Five, which has grown so large. What with other schools merging, she remembered how repelled she had felt when she had heard this. Turn off. But the thought that she was being so easily satisfied as one of those who had trouble fitting in, isn't it because Yukishina Number、no. Five has so many students? We can't be expected to know everyone," she said. Fuka inclined her head. "I wonder. I mean, each grade has about four classes, doesn't it? That's not so many, really. Is that true for second year? Yeah," Fuka nodded. But the third year has eight classes. That many? Fuka was surprised. There were six in the second year. Masamune corrected her. Fuka, how long has it been you stopped going to school? Maybe your memory is a little hazy. I don't think so. Fuka seemed unconvinced, but Kokoro too thought that what Fuka said didn't sound right. There were about the same number of students in the second year as in the first. As Masamune had pointed out, Fuka may not have attended school much in her first year either. Maybe she had never gone at all. Which elementary school did you go to? Yukishina Number、no. Five Junior High was in this district made up of many elementary school. Compared to junior high, these schools were relatively small, and if they had come from the same elementary school, they are bound to be aware of each other. Elementary school number two, Masamune said sulkily. I was at number one. Fuka said. Oh, Kokoro said. Fuka caught her eye. You were in the same school. I was. Yukishina Elementary School number one had two classes in each grade, but probably because they were in different grades, Kokoro had no recollection of Fuka. On top of which, Fuka wasn't exactly the type who stood out. She didn't seem about to star at track or swimming meet, nor did Kokoro. So it wasn't strange that Fuka had no memory of her either. Nevertheless, she still felt there was something odd. To think that she went to the same school as me. So you don't, you two don't remember each other? Subaru asked. Kokoro shook her head. I bet if I tell you where I went to elementary, he said. None of you would have ever heard of it. All eyes were on him now. I went to Nagura Elementary in Ibaga- Ibaraki Prefecture, but when I went to the third year of junior high, I moved to my grandparents' house in Tokyo. The two of us, my older brother and I, the two of you, Masamune asked, and Subaru nodded. What about your parents? Masamune asked. He and Subaru seemed to get on fine, but it wasn't until the summer break when Subaru dyed his hair. He told Masamune he had a brother. Subaru insisted he hadn't been hiding anything. My parents aren't around. We were still in Ibaraki. My mom left us, and my dad remarried and is living with his second wife. That's why my brother and I went to our grandparents. Masamune's face dropped. The rest of them gaps. My older brother and me, Subaru went on. At first, I didn't really want to go to school. I didn't know anyone there. If you wanted to fit in, April was the month to go. When the school year started, it's not that I was pushed out or that anything serious happened. So unlike all of you, I just drop out because I'm lazy and it makes me feel guilty. Hearing him say this made Kokoro feel contrite. Maybe it's true. Nothing serious had happened to Subaru at school. He was given a music player by his father. These things now took on a significance. Aokusa Elementary. Rion's voice rang out in the silence. Aokusa Elementary lay in the opposite direction from Kokoro's Yukishina Number、no. One School, with the junior high situated in between. 
So Rion had not gone abroad at that stage, but had been living very near Kokoro. Urashina suddenly shook his head. You've got to be key joking. About what? Rion said. I went to Aokusa Elementary too. Urashina said. Looking shocked, Rion too looked back at him in astonishment. You were in first grade of junior high, aren't you, Rion? So we were in the same first same grade in elementary? Are you kidding me? You weren't there, were you? I used to be at school every day. Were you really there? Really? I went every I went every day too. Rion looks confused. You didn't know Reshino either? asked Subaru. I don't remember him. He might have been there. Been but I don't think I've ever played with him. How many classes per year were there? Is Aokusa elementary big? Three classes. Kokoro felt a little pain listening to their back and forth. Unlike she and Fuka, who had been in the different years in school to be in a school that small, in the same grade, and not remember each other, they must have lived in the very different walls. I went to Shimizudai Elementary. The last to pipe up was Aki. Her school district was the furthest away from Kokoro's house, but still within walking distance. They all lived really close. All of them were now at Yukishina number no. 5 junior high and each had passed through the mirror in their bed on bedroom to come here. So you live near Kareo? Aki must have lived near Kareo and the shopping district by the station. Kareo was where Kokoro was heading the day she had a panic attack. This was the most happening area around. So it somehow made sense that Aki, with her dyed hair and outlandish outfit, went to the elementary school there. Had Aki gone to the video arcade in Kareo as well? Ko Aki looked puzzled and Kokoro, so Kokoro went on. I'm thinking maybe you bought Fuka's birthday napkins from one of those shops there. She was about to tell her how she had thought that of looking for the same napkins when Aki shook her head. I bought those napkins at Marumido in the shopping center. She said, the hair clips too. Kokoro had never heard of that shop, but Subaru exclaimed, Marumido! Wow! Now that's a real local shop! You must really live in the neighborhood to know it! Weird. I'm so glad to hear that. Where do you usually hang? Hello. <laughs> Sorry, my I think my internet went down for a bit. My apologies. I'm so sorry about this. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. My internet connection recently has been a bit like wonky. Um, it's like it's just weird most of the time. Just give me a second, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm logging in. I'm gonna get another cup of coffee. I'm so sorry, guys. Please, uh, hold on for a second. I'm gonna go. Uh, get coffee. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. So embarrassing. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh my god, are you kidding me? Jesus, so embarrassing. Thank
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> Okay, give me one second. I'm gonna get a cup of coffee and I'll be right back, okay? <laughs> Back. My apologies. My apologies. It's terrible. My connection lately has been really bad. I'm not really bad. I mean, I can still read and all. It's just that sometimes it's, I just like go offline like this without any reason. It's kind of annoying to be honest. Um, thank you for staying here with me. Hell yeah. Okay, I'm gonna continue reading. I'm gonna find good anchors so I can show everyone here with me. Alrighty. Okay. meant something different when Subaru, with his wild hair and forced laid-back air, said it. It meant being up to no good. So, what do you want to do? Masamune asked, glancing at the wall clock in the game room. It's almost five. If you're going to call the Wolf Queen, we better do it now. Shall we? Call her. They spoke virtually in unison. Masamune raised his face to the ceiling. Wolf Queen! Did you call? As ever, she casually flickered into being. The Wolf Queen wore a different dress today with a puffy hem like an antique doll. How many outfits does she actually have? Why didn't you tell us? It was Fuka who asked. Aki, looking uncomfortable in her uniform, hugged her arms to her chest. Tell you what, the wolf queen said. Why didn't you tell us that we are all students at the same junior high? Well, you didn't ask, said the wolf queen icily. All you little red riding hoods had to start had had to do was start talking to each other, and then you would immediately no, you were all from the same school. It took you far too long to find out. She let out a long breath. <sighs> Perhaps you people are all too self-conscious. Don't be stupid, 
Masamune grimaced and was actually getting to his feet with a hard look on his face when Ureshino called. Don't do it! Stood in his and stood in his way. She's just a little girl, he said. Don't do it. What? A little girl? She might be small, but she's extremely powerful and will come back even stronger in a new game. She'll be reborn and start all over again. This is the afterlife for her. She's a ghost, I'm telling you. Enough! A loud voice halted this ty his tirade. It was Rion. Normally calm and collected, he was now all red-faced and clearly angry. When the calm returned, Rion said quietly, I have a question. What is it? You have done this before, bringing other little red riding hoods here and telling them they could w have a wish granted, haven't you? Were those little red riding hoods also students at Yukishina number 5 junior high? Every few years you bring a group of them here, don't you? Every few years. I think it's more consistent than that. But if you want to think that of it that way, I don't mind. The wolf queen spoke petulantly. So every time you choose kids from the school district who have dropped out, or maybe Rion took a shallow breath, maybe you select all from all these kids at Yukishina? You make their mirrors glow and you open up the castle here, but most of the kids are at school. So they never catch their mirrors when, they sh when it shines. The only students who do are the ones at home. Kokoro's heart beat faster. It seemed entirely plausible. So really, every student at school has had the same opportunity to come here. And we haven't actually have been handpicked? Kokoro's chest tightened and she found it hard to breathe. Not true. The wolf queen said empathetically. I selected the seven of you from the start. Well then, what about me? Rion narrowed his eyes. My school isn't Yukishina number five and yet here I am. Why did you summon someone like me? He was trying to meet the wolf queen's eyes. Kokoro was sure she would deflect the question along the lines of How would I know? Or you will find out soon enough. But she didn't. She turned her wolf mask face to Rion. But you badly wanted to go, didn't you? To the public junior high in your area. Rion looked as if he had been struck by lightning. His back straightened as if in that very moment he had been pierced by an arrow. The wolf queen ignored his reaction. She stepped closer into the group. Do you have anything else to ask? I'll answer as best as I can. Yes, I do. Where exactly are we? Aki said. Kokoro still wasn't used to seeing her in uniform, the uniform she knew all too well. This is the castle in the mirror. The wolf queen replied, a little grandly. Your castle opened for you until March. Use it in whatever way you like. What do you want us to do? Aki's voice sounded tearful, as if she were tired. She always put on a boyfriend, but even she was clearly feeling brittle. Her voice pleading, but the wolf queen answered curtly. Nothing really, she said. I expect nothing. As I explained at the beginning, I have merely given you the castle and the right to search for the key that will grant you a wish, that's all. Now if you will excuse me, she added, her voice rising into the air. And with that, she vanished. At that instant, they heard a far-off howl. It was quarter to five. A howl. The howl was their signal to go home. Kokoro remembered with a shiver, and for the first time in a while, the wolf queen's warning that they would be eaten alive if they stayed after the curfew. 
She couldn't believe it was true, yet she still felt a chill run up her spine. Despite the curfew, Kokoro and the others wanted to stay on and talk. They all lived so close to each other, and they all were at the same school. They knew the same school buildings, the grounds, the gym, the bicycle parking area. How incredible that they were all so familiar with it. Kokoro suddenly felt so much closer to them. They probably all went to the same convenience store, shop at the same supermarket, even at Kareo. They were almost neighbors. The clock was ticking towards five. They wanted to say more, but instead they obediently trooped back to the line of mirrors. One thing in particular had been on Kokoro's mind, and she turned to Ureshino as she was, he was about to pass through his mirror. Tell me, she began, was the teacher who listened to you at the school called Miss Kitajima? Ureshino halted and blinked his eyes slowly. She felt she could hear them moving. The free school. I was thinking you had gone to the same place as me. The, oh yeah. Her name was Miss Kitajima. Ureshina looked as if a great tension in him had been released. I thought so, Kokoro said to herself. Was it the same teacher? Fuka asked. She must have overheard them. That's amazing. You really do live close. Yeah, she's so pretty, Miss Kitajima. Kokoro said this casually, but Ureshina tilted his head. Pretty? Kokoro had been vaguely thinking that Ureshino, with his inclination to fall in love, would have been aware of Miss Kitajima's looks, but she found his reply a little unexpected. She remembered the teacher's hand when she offered Kokoro's tea bags, slender fingers, neat nails. She had worn a wonderful perfume as well. Did anyone else know Miss Kitajima and the classroom for the heart? Masamune had referred to it as a private support group, a safe keeping his distance from it, so he might never have actually visited it. How about Aki and Subaru? Kokoro looked over at Subaru, just as he turned to face Aki. Aki-chan, can I ask you something? What? Kokoro was certain he was going to ask something about the school, but he didn't. Why are you in your uniform today? He continued. Did something happen? Aki seemed to freeze. I went to a funeral. There was an audible intake of breath. Aki's cheek was pale and drawn. It was my grandmother who I lived with. My cousins and I were told to wear our uniforms. Didn't you need to go home afterwards? Fuka asked. Is it okay that you were here with us? Well... That's... Aki said, her voice cracking. She seemed about to launch into her usual bow front but, and say something like, It's none of your business or it doesn't matter. But Fuka had no ulterior motive in asking. She was simply concerned about here. It's fine, Aki answered. It's better being here with all of you. When Kokoro had arrived at the castle that day, Aki had been crouching on the sofa alone. She had had her own room in the castle and could have shut herself away. Instead, she was in the game room, face pressed into her knees. Kokoro remembered Aki's face and the look in her eyes and felt a stab in her chest. I see, Subaru said lightly, finally breaking the silence. Were you close to your grandmother? He asked this just quietly as if it wasn't important. Subaru said he's living with his grandmother and grandfather, Kokoro thought. Without his parents, just his older brother, only he could have asked that question. A surprised look surfaced in Aki's eyes, her lips tightened, and she didn't respond immediately. Mm. She said finally, her voice small and husky. She could be strict at times, and I never really thought about whether I loved her or not, but now I realize I really did. I'm so glad you wore your uniform, Subaru said. Thanks. 
to that. Now we all know that we all go to the same school. If not, March would have arrived without anyone saying anything. Aki's eyes seemed to tear up. Kokoro spoke up quickly. Yes, thank you, Aki-chan. It just happened, Aki said and turned away. That's when they heard it. The noise rang through the castle. It was the warning howl they had heard earlier, but much, much louder now. Whoa! They shouted. The air shook. The floor began to sway, and they were rock off their feet. They knew exactly what's in store. It was five o'clock. Let's get out of here! Shouted Rion. Kokoro stumbled and grabbed at her mirror. She saw the others doing the same, but as the huge tremor struck, she couldn't keep her eyes open. The quaking was so vigorous, she had lost control of her facial muscle. She grabbed the mirror's frame tightly, trying to crawl inside. The rainbow-colored light beyond it was wavering. Wait! Don't go away! With all her strength, she heaved herself through. When the shaking stopped, Kokoro found herself back in her own room. The same bed, her familiar desk, the usual curtains. Even though they were closed, she could sense how the atmosphere of the city had changed now that it was November and winter was coming. Her back and forehead were bathed in sweat. Her heart was still pounding. She knew she was lucky. She has just escaped from being eaten. She looked at, over at her mirror. It was no longer glowing. Her knees shook as she remembered the deafening howl. Her bones were still reverber reverberating. She wondered whether the others had made it through. She parted the curtains and spied a graceful crescent moon in the evening sky. For the first time in forever, she slid open the window and leaned out for a better view of the city. Houses just like the one she lived in, tall condominiums, apartment buildings that look from where she stood like matchboxes. In the distance, she could catch the lights flickering in the supermarket. They are all out there somewhere. Every one of them in the same district as her and that is the end for the two chapters today october and november i've looked through december it's going to be really long so i don't think i can do that today it will go through it will go past the two hours limit I have for myself. Therefore, I'm not going to overwork myself as I always do. And I'm just going to chill and catch up with my work and stuff this afternoon. Thank you again, once again, for everyone, everyone for being here with me today. Thank you so, 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 so much. It really means a lot to me that all of you are here. And it really means a lot to me that you guys are interested in um, what listening to me read. And I'm very, 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 very grateful for that. I am very thankful. I am very, very thankful that you guys are here with me today. Um, especially after I took like a... 10 days break <laughs> Thank you so much Thank you so much for Sheena This is your first time I see you Thank you so much I hope you will come by the next time Thank you to Anna Heon Thank you. This is your first time as well I believe uh, Oh Freya Oh my god Freya I just finished my reading session I'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. 
as usual, Taza, we are doing. Uh, I'm doing reclear tomorrow. I'll let you know, okay? And Rico, also oh, Rico, happy birthday to you. Happy belated birthday to you. Thank you for being here with me and Arum, as usual. Mm. Thank you so much for being here with me. And thank you for Terraris, Petra, for being here with me today. I thank all of you. And of course, thank you Zappo for taking care of me as always. Thank you so much. Thank you, you guys. I am grateful that you guys are here with me today after I took a 10 days break. And I shall see you all soon, okay? Um, usually my noodles will be on Wednesday, but this week I'm going to move it to two, uh, to Thursday morning because uh, on Wednesday morning I have something to attend to. I will update you all. Uh, please follow me on my Twitter and my Twitch channel to find out when I go live. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to me today. I am grateful. I am grateful. And thankful. Alright, it's lunch time for me. And I don't know what time is it for you guys. But if you guys want to claim anything, uh, a quote on love, a uh, tarot reading session, or a poem that you all want to listen to. Uh, I'll give you guys about a couple minutes to claim your points before I end the stream today, alright? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope you guys will have a wonderful day. And a wonderful week. It's Monday, right? Uh, I know people usually uh, don't look forward to Mondays, but uh, Nudibles always make me look forward to Mondays because I can hang out with all of you, and I'm very happy about that. Oh, thank you, Arum. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon, Arum. I've always seen you around. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Alrighty. I'm ending my stream right now. Have a good day, everyone. Have a great, 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 great week ahead. I'll see you guys um probably tomorrow. Or, I mean, for Nudibles, I'll do it. Uh, I'll see you guys on Thursday, okay? Thursday morning, 11 a.m. GMT plus 8. But for other streams, I'll see you whenever I go live. Follow me on Twitter, Ariana, at Ariana Nuna, A R Y A H N A N O O N A. To find out when I go live. Thank you so much once again for being here with me today. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great week. I love you all.